Hello, period nine. I couldn't be in class today, so I figured I would videotape the lesson so you can keep up with period five. Today we're going to prove that a quadrilateral we're given is either a rectangle or a rhombus. So on this first page here, um, I want you to take a minute to list all the differences between the diagonals, angles, and sides of a rectangle and a rhombus all of them that you can remember from the properties. So why don't you pause the video, write down all the differences you can think of, and then I'll come back. Here are the differences, and what makes the rectangle special is that its diagonals are congruent, and it has essentially four right angles, so all of its angles are congruent. What makes the rhombus special is first and foremost that all of its sides are congruent, and its diagonals are perpendicular as well. Let's go to the next page. On this page, I just want to remind you of the three formulas that we use when we do coordinate proofs. We have here the distance formula, which you should memorize, the midpoint formula, which we should already have memorized, and I'm going to add one more formula, which we already know, the slope formula. Let's add it to this page so we remember that there's three formulas involved in coordinate proofs. Slope, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We call that the change in y over the change in x. Done. Here's a list of suggested ways to prove a rectangle. You could prove that it's a parallelogram with one right angle. Because if you have a parallelogram with one right angle, it forces it to be a rectangle since opposite angles are congruent and consecutive angles are supplementary. If you use this method, one way to do that would be use the midpoint twice, proving that the diagonals bisect each other, getting yourself a parallelogram, and then additionally the slope twice on a, one pair of adjacent sides to show that those sides have negative reciprocal slopes, meaning they form right angles because they are perpendicular. Another way to prove you have a parallelogram with one right angle is to simply do the slope four times. In doing that, you will have both pairs of opposite sides parallel, making it a parallelogram. And additionally, you can just look at one pair of adjacent sides. Note that their slopes are negative reciprocal, which means that the lines are perpendicular, forming a right angle. Another way to prove that a quad is a rectangle is to prove it's a parallelogram with congruent diagonals. That would involve the distance six times. That's a nice easy method because all you have to remember is distance six times on all of the sides and the diagonals. By using the distance formula on the sides, you're going to prove that you have a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides congruent. That makes it a parallelogram. Additionally, a parallelogram with congruent diagonals is a rectangle, and pardon the typo there. Another way to prove you have a parallelogram with congruent diagonals is to use the midpoint formula to get yourself a parallelogram, and additionally, the distance formula to get your congruent diagonals. The choice is up to you. You need to find out what you're comfortable with, but you do need to be aware of all the different methods because it depends on what's given to you. Um, that will determine the method that you might need to use. In most times, I would suggest, in most cases, I would suggest using this one right here. Distance six times. It's just easier and it works out for all of our parallelograms. Now on to proving rhombus. You can simply prove that it's a quadrilateral with four congruent sides skipping the step of first proving that it's a parallelogram. This is the easiest method to use, and that includes doing the distance four times, once on each side. That's the one I'm going to suggest that you use and stick to and memorize. You could also prove that it's a parallelogram first by doing perhaps midpoint twice on the diagonals. With perpendicular diagonals, you would use the slope two times. So either prove it's just a quadrilateral with four congruent sides, or prove that it's a parallelogram that has perpendicular diagonals. Your choice, but this is the definitely the easiest way to go, especially because I keep telling you that with our parallelograms, distance works on all. Distance, distance, distance.
Next page. Here in this page, I wrote some of the plans for f uh, proving our parallelograms. Here in the parallelogram box, I put the perhaps easiest way or shortest way to prove a parallelogram. In this rhombus, I put the really only way we should prove a rhombus. Over here, I put maybe the shortest way to prove a rectangle, but certainly not the easiest. And down here, this is about proving a square. We're going to look at that tomorrow. To prove a square, you need to prove that it's both a rhombus and a rectangle. So you would prove essentially that it's a rhombus with congruent diagonals. However, on this page, I'm going to suggest that you stick to using, for all of them, the distance formula. Distance here for a parallelogram. Distance here for a rectangle. Of course, distance for the rhombus and distance for the square. Distance for everybody. It just makes it easier. You just remember to do distance for every parallelogram. You just got to know why you're using the distance and how you're using the distance. It's a little easier, less things to remember. You do need to be aware of all the other methods in case a problem leads you down the path of solving it a different way, but pick a favorite and perhaps stick to the distance for each. That's it. Next page. Here's our first example. Given a quadrilateral, A, B, C, D with vertices given, prove that it's a rectangle. I'm going to pause the video and let you work on graphing it and labeling it and then writing your distance formula if that's what you're using. Always write your formulas at the top of the paper, whatever formulas you're going to use for the proof. You need to write your formulas once and then show all the work and make conclusions during your proof. I'll let you set it up. Now we're back. Notice I have the distance formula up here that we're used to using. But in this case, because the rectangle is countable, we have horizontal lines and vertical lines, we can actually use something different to show our work. When you have an exam and you have countable uh, side lengths, you need to show some kind of work. You can't just write, I count it. So either you do the distance formula, which is fine, but a little lengthy, or you use this formula, which is the absolute value of the difference between the y's, or the absolute value of the difference between the x's. So for instance, if I'm finding the length of AD, the only thing that's changing here are the y values. Notice A to D, the x values stayed the same. So I'm going to take the absolute value of the difference between the y values. 3 minus 1. Here's my work. That's going to equal 2. Nice and easy. For BC, I find out the ones that don't match. With BC, the 5's match. So I take the absolute value of the difference between the y values. So I would be taking the absolute value of 3 minus 1 again, which is 2. And I'm going to make a conclusion here. I'm going to say that AD, segment AD, is congruent to segment BC, right here and right now, because that's what I just found out. For the length DC, let's change the color. From D to C, the Y values are the same. Therefore, I'm going to subtract the X values and take the absolute value of 5 minus 1, which is 4. For AB, the y value is the same. I'm going to subtract the x values. Absolute value of 5 minus 1. You can see already that they're going to be equal. Make a conclusion. Each time a conclusion occurs, you need to make the conclusion that segment DC is congruent to segment AB. Now we're ready for our first conclusion during the proof. And that's going to happen right here. We can state that ABCD is a parallelogram. And why is that at this point? Notice we just showed 
that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. And if a quadrilateral has both pairs of opposite sides congruent, then it's a parallelogram. So I'm going to say because both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Now we need to add congruent diagonals because we want to prove that we have a parallelogram with congruent diagonals, which will make it a rectangle. We have to draw in our diagonals, AC, DB, so we have something to refer to. We need to find the length of DB and the length of AC. So I'll let you do that. I'll take a minute to do that, and I'll come back. So I'm back. Hopefully this is what you ended up with. DB, the length equals radical 20, and the length of AC also equals radical 20. Here's the next conclusion. The length of DB is congruent to the length of AC. And the final conclusion here in green, ABCD is a rectangle. Since it is a parallelogram with congruent diagonals, done. Notice we proved first that it was a parallelogram, then we found congruent diagonals, and it's a rectangle because it's a parallelogram with congruent diagonals. Done. Distant formula. Easiest way to go for a rectangle. Well, that's it for the rectangle. Let's move on to the rhombus. Now for the second example, we'll prove that this quadrilateral, ABCD, is a rhombus. Remember, the only way we're going to prove a rhombus is to show that we have a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. That will involve the distance formula. So let's write our distance formula up here. Square root of, we'll go run it once. Subtract the x values squared plus subtract the y values squared. Of course, we now have to graph the quadrilateral and label it. So I'm going to do that while you do that, and then we'll come back. So now it's all graphed, and we're ready to start finding the distance. I've lined up the ordered pairs to make it easier for me to find the distance between the vertices. So now we're finding AB, the length of AB. Notice I didn't put a bar on top. That tells me I'm finding the length. So from A to B over here, from A to B, I'll do my distance formula. So the square root of 4 subtracting the A's, uh, the X's, 4 minus negative 1 is 5, squared is 25, plus 5 minus 1 is 4, squared is 16. So that's going to give me a square root of 41. Now for BC, 9 minus 4 is 5, squared is 25, plus uh, 1 minus 5, or 5 minus 1 is 4, squared is 16. And that's at radical 41 also, looking good so far. I don't have to make a conclusion yet. I'm not going to make one until all four sides are congruent, because that's what I'm looking for. CD. C to D. 9 minus 4 is 5. Squared is 25. 1 minus negative 3. Watch your signs. is 4. Squared is 16. So again, looks like I've got 25 plus 16, which equals red 41. For D A, D to A, I've got 4 minus negative 1, which is 5. Squared is 25. Then I have 1 minus negative 3, which is really 1 plus 3, which is 4. Squared is 16. Ta-da! They're all radical 41. Now I need to make a conclusion. I can either go like this and say they're all congruent, which is probably easiest, or I could state that AB, segment AB, is congruent to segment BC, which is congruent to CD, which is congruent to DA. Now we're ready for our conclusion, which is that ABCD 
is a rhombus. We're done. Because it has four congruent sides. That's it. Rhombus is one of the easiest things to prove. Done. Distance four times. So here's another example of proving a rectangle. In this example, I would definitely use distance and not slope. Notice, in this example, we have horizontal lines and vertical lines. The problem with slope on this is that you're not really going to get nicely matching slopes. The horizontal lines are going to have a zero slope. Those are matching, those are easy. And the vertical lines actually have no slope. In a proof like this, when you end up with a zero slope, you're going to have to state that they're horizontal and then state that horizontal lines are always parallel. With the vertical lines, you're going to have to state that there's no slope and that these are vertical lines and vertical lines are always parallel. The reason you need to state that these are horizontal and vertical is because when you go for the right angle after proving it's a parallelogram, you're going to want to state that horizontal and vertical lines are always perpendicular. And if you haven't stated previously that you have horizontal and vertical lines, you can't make that statement. So you need to say that horizontal and vertical lines are perpendicular, which then forms right angles. And therefore, you happen to have a parallelogram with one right angle, so it's a rectangle. So you have a parallelogram with one right angle, making it a rectangle. The conclusions just get a little more lengthy, and there's more steps to remember using slope. So in this case, I would definitely recommend using the distance. Remember, distance works on all of our quadrilateral, on all of our parallelograms anyway. So try this one by distance and write the coordinates down and try it on your own on graph paper using the distance formula. Don't forget to draw in your diagonals and do the distance formula on those too so that once you get your parallelogram, you can prove it's a parallelogram with congruent diagonals making it a rectangle. Good luck. On to the next page. Here's another example, this time proving a rhombus, and you're going to use the distance formula one time on each side. Conclude that all four sides are congruent, making the quadrilateral a rhombus. The rhombus should be one of the easier ones to prove. I'll let you work on that, and good luck. Here's the next example. You're going to prove a rectangle. Use the distance six times, just like before. Here's a rhombus. Use the distance formula four times, once on each side, just like before. Make sure you're writing conclusions on each of your proofs and the formula at the top of each proof.